Derby Arts, we're back to talk about TV uh, at Gold Derby. There's so much to talk about at the Golden Globes this year. Really interesting categories, very competitive. I'm here with Luca Giliberti and Sam Ekman and Kevin Jacobson and Riley Chow and Rob LaCuria. Let's just get straight to it. Sam, what do you think is going to win? Like, uh, it's, it's actually, I'm really confused. I don't really know um, what's going to happen. Why don't you tell me? Since they've never nominated it before, I feel like they'll be worried about looking too stupid of having snubbed the, you know, the biggest comedy series of the past however many years. Um, so I do think it's going to win comedy series. I am not sure about acting. I don't think it's going to sweep the same way it will have swept at the Emmys. Um, I think they could, you know, Jason Sudeikis has really been the face of Ted Lasso and that picked up uh, a few nominations here. So I think he could edge out uh, Eugene Levy in that case. Um, and Catherine O'Hara, I don't, I, it's hard for me to imagine um, someone beating my queen, Catherine O'Hara at anything, but uh, Kaylee Cuoco's show, The Flight Attendant has really sort of hit at the right time. Um, I'm still predicting Catherine O'Hara right now, uh, just cause I think she's kind of the, you know, maybe the most beloved character of Schitt's Creek. But I think Kaylee Cuoco stands a really, really good shot um, at winning that acting uh, best actress for that. Um, so those are my thoughts. You know what? That would be a really fun thing to watch Kaylee Cuoco win an award because we, uh, we mostly saw her yeah. reactions when she was nominated. She's a very like demonstrative and uh, happy-go-lucky kind of person. I think that'd be really fun. I just want to see her win for that. Um, Kevin, what about you? What do you think about the comedy categories? Yeah, so Schitt's Creek is certainly, you know, it is what it is. It won all those Emmys and it still remains so popular that it could just be Schitt's Creek because it's Schitt's Creek. But I do think it is a surprisingly uh, deep field here where it's not going to be easy for Schitt's Creek to win. And that is sort of why recently I've come around to just doing Ted Lasso and having um, Jason Sudeikis be like the pairing that they like to do with the TV categories where the series wins and then it wins one of the lead acting awards. So I mean, Apple TV Plus hasn't um, won a Golden Globe from what I remember. You know, they didn't win for the morning show. Um, so I think that would be something that they would enjoy, just rewarding a new network, quote unquote. Um, but then I sort of agree that Kaylee Cuoco is prime Golden Globe type of win for me. Um, and especially seeing the show get into comedy series is a good sign that they like the show. and the fact that it got into SAG ensemble and actress there, not that they share any voters, but I think there's a clear sign there that, um, you know, there's a lot of support out there for her and that show. And so, you know, but I could very well see a Schitt's Creek, just, you know, comedy series, actress, supporting actor combination very easily. So it's tough. It's surprisingly tough. Yeah, and that's really good. It's good that the comedy categories have got so much really rich material. I'm on I'm on the view that Shits Creek's not going to win anything. Um, I just think they it's one of those shows that they nominated because they kind of have to feel like they're part of the zeitgeist, but they don't really care about shit. Uh, that's my view. Oh, I, and I, and I, that's I, hate I, speech, Rob. We <laughs> <laughs> really, don't tolerate that. We don't tolerate that. You're not welcome here anymore. Um, but. What has thrown me is the Emily in Paris, Flight Attendant, The Great, all getting actress nominations as well as comedy series. That's thrown me for a loop. And I, what about you, Luca? Are you confused as confused as I am, or do you actually know what you're talking about? Yeah, no, I'm uh, confused. Uh, it, it's perhaps the most uh, competitive comedy series race we've seen in quite a while here. Um, what Kevin mentioned earlier is very important is that they love to do pairings. They love to pair an acting category with the series prize, which is my, my prediction is probably dumb. I have the three main comedy categories actually splitting, uh, going to three different shows. I have um, Jason Sudeikis winning actor. I have Kaylee Cuoco winning uh, actress. I think Catherine O'Hara is a threat to be, for obvious reasons, but I think Kaylee Cuoco, again, she embodies everything the Hollywood Foreign Press Association loves. She's also been around for ages. They can finally crown her here. They can be the first ones to do it. I think um, they will want to do it for this huge performance. It, it's, it's a big performance and they love big performances. 
I don't have Schitt's Creek winning a single acting category. I don't have it winning both supporting races. I don't do not have it winning actor. I do not have it winning actress. I think comedy series will be a place for them to say, okay, we're going to give you something. Um, okay. And I, also because I can't decide if, if would I pair Jason Sudeikis and Ted Lasso? Would I pair uh, Kaylee Cuoco and uh, the flight attendant? Uh, for, I, I can't decide between the two. So I, I'm just defaulting to Schitt's Creek. Uh, as the one place where, the, where it could be rewarded. But you know what? I wouldn't be surprised to see the great win paired with, I don't know, um, an, an actor win for, yeah. so, so, so it's very, it's a very confusing deal. I am thinking that the great is more of a threat than we might be giving it credit for. And that's what I was just wondering the other day when I was having one of those moments. Um, Riley, do you agree? Or do you think this is about where I'm thinking things? Yeah, I've got El Fanning winning. Uh, it's Hulu. It's uh, Tony McNamara. It's a you know big period piece. It, it's all the stuff that we would expect them to like. Um, Shit's Creek is a tricky one because it is the kind of show that uh, you would think they would not really care about uh, since they had ignored it for so many years and they don't like rubber stamping the Emmys. But then they did give it five nominations, which is you know unprecedented for these big shows that they uh, missed. Like Game of Thrones, Veep, it's not like they ever went back and gave it, you know, five nominations. Uh, most of the time they just ignored it, or maybe they throw in uh, like a Lenny Eating nomination. Uh, Schitt's Creek is the most nominated comedy in a decade since Glee, which uh, won three awards, you know, one for Chris Colfer, Jane Lynch, and the series. So yeah, Schitt's Creek probably is where the smart money is. But we just have so many good alternatives that I find that it's just easier to just uh, pretend that it's not nominated at all. So I'm not predicting Schitt's Creek uh, in, in any category. Uh, when we have stuff like Fleabag and Breaking Bad uh, winning at the Golden Globes after they missed it for so many years, it's because they don't have a good alternative. I mean, last year, if they hadn't gone for Fleabag, were they going to go back to the Kaminsky method? Were they going to go back to the marvelous Mrs. Maisel? Uh, no. Whereas this year they have, you know, all these good alternatives of anointing something for the Emmys. Uh, so since Ted Lasso is uh, definitely winning the Emmy, uh, I have uh, that winning the Golden Globe. Uh, this is, you know, pretty typical of what we see in this category where you've got uh, the lead uh, paired with the series win and nothing else from the show even nominated. We saw that with Atlanta, Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, Girls, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, Mozart in the Jungle, Transparent, yeah, I hope you're right. I think Ted Lasso is one of the best things on TV by far, and I hope it wins. Um, but I'm just not so sure in the comedy series race. And that this is these are exciting, and so that's a good thing. We don't have to have everything being so boring and predictable. Speaking of, let's talk about the crown. I mean, drama categories, because I think on the drama side, uh, if you're not predicting the crown to at least win something then I question whether you might have dementia or something. So I think the crown's winning that. I think Josh O'Connor is out front in actor. I also think in actress, they're probably going to give it to Emma Corrin. Um, I think um, Gillian Anderson is winning in supporting actress. Uh, the only one that the crown can't win is supporting actor. I, I think this is the crowns now. Uh, they, they love that show. It's only won two acting awards though in the past. And remember, John Lithgow never won um, back in the day. Uh, I think he was beaten by Hugh Laurie for the night manager. So it does give me some pause. But season four of The Crown, I've never seen so much praise and acclaim for a season. So that's where I stand on the drama categories. I might stick with you first, Riley. Are you on the same page or do you think that I'm completely insane? No, oh, that's it. it. It got tons of nominations. Uh, the one that I'm concerned about is Jillian Anderson. I mean, she does seem like the last several winners that we've had in the category. But, you know, as you said, they also snubbed uh, John Lithgow. And I think it could be a place that they award Annie Murphy uh, to give Schitt's Creek something. Okay. And what do you think about the, um, you think the crown's winning all the others? Uh, I've got a winning actress uh, in actor. I don't think it has much of a chance. I was going with Matthew Reese just because it seemed like kind of a Globes thing to do. This is somebody that they like. He's on a new show. Uh, but now I'm starting to think maybe just nobody cares at all about Perry Mason since it was snubbed at the Screen Actors Guild and the Writers Guild, not nominated in series here. So I've switched over to Jason Bateman uh, because his show does have four nominations and it's really hard to get that many nominations and uh, lose if you're a drama. 
True. And um, the last two seasons, it was it only ever scored a nomination for him. And this year it has yeah. four. So they've obviously really like quadrupled down on this show. So that's a good point. Um, Kevin, what about you? What do you how do you feel like these categories are gonna pan out? Um, yeah, I mean certainly a crown coronation, not to not to be punny about it, but it's it's happening, obviously, in drama series. And I think Emma Corrin is once again in that ingenue slot of we can reward her first, hooray for us, and she's playing Princess Diana. I mean, it's you can't get more baity than that, really, at the Golden Globes. Um but for drama actor, that is definitely trickier than at first glance because I didn't want to go too much as far as over rewarding the crown because they don't always, you know, give that many wins out. So I just went super random because I was looking at my predictions and I'm like, I feel like I, these need to be wackier. You know, these are too boring. So I'm just going with Al Pacino and Hunters. <laughs> <laughs> because you know it's a place to put you know give amazon an award so there you go i'm pretty sure he won for you don't know jack which i would never yep. didn't even remember that existed he won a globe mm -hmm. for that. he's won three globes i think he's got like a billion nominations i wouldn't put it past them to give it to him <laughs> for that one season yep. role in in that amazon show so that's a good point um what about you sam uh, like Riley, I've also switched to Jason Bateman for drama actor. I just don't, it's kind of unlike the Globes to just let a show sweep. Um, and, and I don't know if the, the crown is capable of doing that or not. Lead actor seems like the one place where maybe it is vulnerable and there are other options. I also don't think Perry Mason is really being remembered in the way we thought it would be. Um, Ozark is really did very well in the nominations and so I think that's the place where they're going to give Ozark something is for Jason Bateman okay. um, but I do agree with the crown winning drama series um, if I will say if there was only the Mandalorian or only Lovecraft Country there I think one of those could spoil in a crazy globes thing because they love hopping on board to trends to the new cool shows um we know in the past those type of genre shows don't get acting nominations at the Globe, so it doesn't really matter for them that they don't have acting nominations. Uh, but I think they kind of cancel each other out in this case and the Crown takes it. Yeah, I was trying to formulate an argument yesterday about The Mandalorian because I've got this sneaking suspicion that they may like that more than we think, but I think you're right. I think it's probably not going to quite get there. And finally, Luca, what do you think of the drama categories? Yeah, I have uh, the crown winning uh, series and actress. It's weird to predict the crown in series because so few shows win for their first season and then have this long uh, break in between and then come back and win for their fourth. But uh, with uh, the um, COVID pandemic and fewer shows being in contention, the fact that the fourth season, the, the crown just blew up, uh, I think uh, this will be our anomaly here. I have a winning actress. I think Emma Corrin will uh, walk away with that pretty easily. I do not have a winning actor. Um, I think what Kevin said is absolutely possible. I think Al Pacino can definitely win this. Um, I still have Matthew Reese. I know uh, Perry Mason was snubbed, but Rami Youssef won last year without his show nominated. Sometimes you can win as the um, only person nominated uh, from your show. He was also never rewarded for the Americans. Uh, this could be his makeup award. And they can, again, they can be the first ones um, to um, acknowledge him for this show and that could uh, pave the path for his Emmy nomination or perhaps Emmy win, I don't know. Um, I do not have Gillian Anderson winning a supporting actress. I understand that she seems like the obvious choice, but you know who else was the obvious choice? Helena Bonham Carter or Meryl Streep last year and they neither won this category. Um, I have Julia Garner winning there. I think she will be Ozark's representation at the Golden Globe. She's now a two-time Emmy winner. She's probably going to rack up her third, or, or even depending on, when, depending on when Ozark is eligible, she might rack up her third and fourth nominations this year. She had a big year with the assistant as well. Um, I think they might just want to get on board early enough before it's uh, too late. And, and people love her character, Ruth Langmore. So I think that will be the place to reward Ozark, as I don't have it in actor. And unfortunately, I don't think Laura Linney will be able to pull through either. Wow. 
<clears throat> talk about hate speech. Like, to not have Julian Anderson winning is just sacrilege. And I just think I may have to ban you from further chats. Um, finally, we should talk about TV limited series um, and TV movie limited series and, and the other supporting act, act, uh, uh, acting race. Sorry, I'm, I'm stepping out of my words. I think um, limited series is where all the really good stuff is these days. And I feel like the Queen's Gambit has this in the bag. Um, I, and I just think like, I, I would love to see Jeff Daniels and Brendan Gleeson win for the Comey role because I really dig that, but I just don't think that's probably going to happen. So I'm going with um, Mark Ruffalo. Just, um, I just have a hunch there because his performance is so great. And Anya Taylor-Joy and probably Donald Sutherland. So let's go with whoever you, let's go with you, Luca, while we're here. Let, let's talk about the limited stuff because that's really, really interesting. Yeah, so the Queen's Gambit and Anya Taylor Joy are winning. Uh, period. Um, I, I don't. I would be shocked if either one lost. The show is huge. Anya Taylor Joy is nominated twice. There's no way they're not going to reward her. Shira Haas, Kate Blanchett might be the spoilers, but I really just don't see it happening. Um, an actor, I have Hugh Grant. Um, I think this. The Undoing got four nominations. It's going to be rewarded somewhere. I think what you mentioned was very possible. I think a Donald Sutherland win is could be the uh, Stellan Skarsgård, this uh, very this veteran actor who's never really been rewarded, um, and the Golden Globes can be the first ones to give it to him, um, and he could be the representative for the Undoing. But I think Hugh Grant is another one who I believe they have rewarded him, but he in general he's been pretty under rewarded by awards bodies and. Um, Obviously, his character, he, he does something he's never really done in his career before. So I think uh, that's a possibility there, or that's what I'm predicting. And in supporting actor, I'm going with uh, Brendan Gleeson. I think, I know a lot of people are hesitant because he's playing Donald Trump. I do not think the Hollywood Foreign Press Association cares. I think it, it's absolutely what they love. It's his big... I don't, I don't, yeah, it, it's a big, huge performance, obviously, and it's a performance with a capital P, so um, uh, that's where I am at the moment. When um, <laughs> Brendan Gleeson first walked into the room as Trump, I f it felt like this spectre, or like Jabba the Hutt, come. it's just, he, it's the most horrifying role, it's so good, he has to win everything. Sam, what about you? I do think Brendan Gleeson is a very globes thing to do um <laughs> i just you know for it just seems timely it just seems like the thing they'll do even though the comey rule isn't uh, nominated in the top category but um i have dan levy winning there i think he's kind of the apple in the bag of oranges um as the one comedic performance he also as a you know creator producer uh writer director of schitt's creek he is definitely like the face of that show in a lot of ways and I, I just think he, he stands out among the the nominees to me in that category um, I do think Queen's Gambit and Anya Taylor-Joy are definitely winning Anya's had an incredible year and they, this is where they can definitely reward her small acts I know a lot of people were predicting but it doesn't really feel like the Globes care about that sort of thing it's like more of a critics thing that they put on to seem cool. Um, and for lead actor, I have Mark Ruffalo, but I'm really tempted to put Hugh Grant in because I agree that they, The Undoing was a really massive success for HBO. And it seems like that should pop up somewhere. I don't know where it should pop up, but I think that could be Mark Ruffalo's uh, downfall there because he's, we, we're sort of removed from that movie at this point. Yeah, and you're right, The Undoing, you guys are right. The Undoing is going to have to get something. It's got four nominations, and it was it's so and it's very globy. It's just it's pulpy and and fun, and it's got big stars. Kevin, do you think so? Yeah, I agree with a lot of what's been said so far. That the Queen's Gambit is just it's it's practically a lock that it that plus Anya Taylor Joy are just going to be paired together. And I do agree that Hugh Grant. I mean, they they really love him. They they really do, and they did give him a award back in the day for four weddings and a funeral. 
um but i don't think that he's been rewarded since so it's it's kind of been a while and this is certainly a very showy role that we haven't seen much from him before so i think all of that is absolutely gonna add up to this is going to be the place they reward the undoing i didn't really get a chance to talk about the supporting categories earlier but i'm kind of like sam and thinking that dan levy is just going to be like because he is the representation for the show in terms of acting directing and creating and writing and all that that they'll just be like here you go we'll, we'll give you that one and maybe not any other Schitt's Creek actors and um agree with you Rob on Gillian Anderson she is she's winning so come on let's be honest here yeah yep. final say <laughs> and come on what do you think in, in the limited series Gillian's winning it winning it right uh, well, I don't think there are any limited series uh, in that category, but uh, I've got the Queen's Gambit for uh, limited series. Uh, you know, it, it's just so huge. I could see Small Axe or Unorthodox taking it, though. Uh, and I'm less convinced about Anya Taylor-Joy, even though everybody says that she's a lock. I think the, the show is carrying her uh, as opposed to the other way around, uh, which I think is, you know, something against her. Uh, it's the opposite of you know what I'm predicting in actor, where I've got Ethan Hawke and his show is not even nominated. Uh, in supporting actor, I have another Showtime win. They love that network. Uh, they love veteran actors in that category. So I've got Brennan Gleeson. Yeah. Uh, you know the front runner in the odds is John Boyega, but you know I'm predicting only white people in all the other categories. So why would I stop now? Fair enough. I think it's fair enough. Um, guys, thanks so much for your time today. Everyone, make sure you stick with Gold Derby. We've got plenty more to come this awards season.